Yo, what's up, everybody? It's Wednesday, September 18th. Today, the Fed made its move. And I got to be honest, I was a little bit surprised at how the market ended up because um, even though my outlook, my, my broader outlook is, is negative based on what I feel is going to be a slowdown in the economy and stocks will eventually reflect that, I thought today we'd see a bullish move. We started off with a bullish move. Anyway, let's go over what happened. If the, the monetarists got everything they were hoping for. They got a 50 basis point rate cut, which I have to say on Powell's uh, behalf, or I guess just uh, based on his prior behavior where he goes incrementally or whatever the market dictates, it was kind of a 50-50 for a 50 basis point. Maybe it had it had moved closer to a 50 basis point cut based on where Fed fund futures. I, I might be wrong on that. It actually probably he might have been right exactly with with his normal mode of operating where Fed fund futures were saying 50 basis points and that's what the Fed did. Anyway, the monetarists got exactly what they wanted. There was a very brief initial pop up in the stock market. Yeah, you know, I think Dow touched a new high. S&P maybe hit a new high intraday and then it, it fell back down. Now, I still think there could be some lingering bullish reaction to this uh, because short term is always driven by emotion and emotion is driven by a view which is pretty much 100% a monetarist uh, lens on the economy and, and policy, okay? So I wouldn't be surprised to see the market back up tomorrow. And also today was a social security payment day. And normally so those days where you see a, a large leading flow, spending flow, uh, those are usually supportive to uh, the stock market. So we didn't see that today, the market sold off, but it is, it is kind of a um, a sign that a lot of this was already baked in, that, that there were bullish positions built up in advance of this Fed meeting. It's been talked about for so long. I've been talking about it from the standpoint of, you know, how it is basically like a, a, a neurosis, uh, just a, 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 um, a sign of the neurotic state, mental state of, monetarists, people who are just so deeply into analysis by monetary policy, and they don't even really understand the true impact of monetary policy. Uh, so now it's from what I remember, the leading up to this, I've been telling you guys from this point forward, everything changes. Okay. This is a fundamental change in the monetary and fiscal environment that we've been in for the last, what, two and a half years, all right? And it's important to understand that because like I've been saying, this lays the groundwork, it, it lays the, um, the outlook going all the way into next year if there's no offsetting policy uh, uh, implementation. You know, I've been all over that, how we're going to see increased fiscal drag. We're going to see increased fiscal drag from these rate cuts. And it's going to start off with, we're going to see it pretty quickly in the discount on treasury bills. That's effectively the interest rate paid on treasury bills. You know, treasury uses is now using uh, much more issuance of bills as opposed to bonds and notes for, you know, uh, government financing, if you want to call it that, but uh, it's not really financing. It's all reserve drain. But anyway, we'll we'll go with that nomenclature. Uh, and we have, uh, f uh, I think, eight week, uh, four week and eight week bill issuance tomorrow. So we'll start to see very quickly in the data, in the Treasury statement data, the deceleration, the slowdown in those interest income transfers on treasury bills. And, you know, that is going to be, have a negative impact on the economy. That is very slowly slowing down 
siphoning away some of those interest income transfers, like the analogy I've been using is that, you know, pressing down on the brake on your car, your car's been going at certain speed, 60 miles an hour. Today, the brakes came on a little bit, slightly, not a lot, but the brakes are on, so maybe the car's gonna go at, you know, 59 or 58 miles an hour. And that's all going to percolate through the economy, okay? The economy, I've been telling you this now for a while, that the economy isn't growing very fast. It's growing at a 2 2.5% uh, clip. And that's with, we've had over a trillion dollars of interest income transfers into the economy this year. And it's still only capable of running at a 2 and 2.5% 2 clip. So it won't take any big reduction in those interest income transfers to slow the growth rate down. And when the growth rate slows down, two things are gonna happen. Number one, you're gonna to start to hear all the finger pointing and people blaming the Fed that they waited too long and this and that, and they should have acted sooner. It's, it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be hilarious. And remember, you heard it here first. It's gonna be all over every headline, every big shot on Wall Street, every economist, Every market analyst is going to be they're going to be on CNBC. They're going to parade them across Fox Business and Bloomberg. They're all going to be saying, "Oh, the Fed waited too long," and then the market's going to start pricing in another uh, rate cut, and then the Fed is going to follow that, and then it's just going to be one after another after another. And every time it cuts, that's going to take away some of those interest income transfers. The economy is going to slow down. That break. The brake pressure is gonna increase. Your car's gonna go from 58 to 55 to 50 to 45, and that's how it's gonna go. And by next year, if they don't address these, uh, the fiscal drag that's coming into play, we're in recession, all right? Has nothing to do with who gets elected, although uh, election is important because we'll have to see whoever does get elected, what economic policy proposals are put out there, what gets passed by Congress, you know, what the, what, what actually what the makeup of Congress is going to be anyway, that's also going to be decided in the election. So I've been telling you guys this, and I have to say, can't forget that by the end of this month, September 30th, Congress has to come up with a continuing resolution, otherwise the government shuts down. There's another tax drain on October 15th. It's kind of a small one, but still we had 134 billion drain just in the last uh, three days. You know, that has to be recovered. So, <laughs> I mean, you got things going on here, folks. It's not like I didn't tell you. I've been telling you this all along. Um, what do you do? Well, you got to sign up for my report to um, get some advice on that. I'm just giving you the macro picture. You know, if you're smart, if you understand the macro picture, it doesn't take a, a, a lot of um, coaching to strategize. Uh, but again, you know, this is the beginning. It's going to roll out slowly. This is the first little tap on the brakes. And you got a bunch of things coming up that I've been telling you guys about, all right? And next year, raising the debt ceiling, the fiscal drag that comes into play next year. Who's elected? What are the, uh, the economic policy proposals? You got to be on top of this. I mean, you don't have to be. You don't have to be on top of this stuff. You could do like what most people do. They freak out. They get emotional. They wait and then they panic sell at the bottom or they, they're all been buying up here. They've all been buying up here. These are the same people, I've been telling you guys this, these are the same people who were either out of the market or they were all selling last year because it was universally stated that there was gonna be a recession. I was the only one saying there was not gonna be a recession. As long as Congress raised the debt ceiling, which they did, there's not gonna be a recession. And I said the market was gonna go to new all-time highs. And now for the last couple of months, I've been saying, leading up to these rate cuts, you know, this is it. This changes everything. And it doesn't change things in the way that these monetarists believe. They only understand half the picture. They really even don't understand that the, correctly that half of the picture. They see everything through the debt side. They don't see anything through the asset side. It's like the same stupidity with the stupid um, uh, national debt. 
when they show that stupid clock, you know, 167,000 per family or something like that owed, that's what we own. We own those treasuries. The non-government of the world owns those treasuries. That's an asset. Plus they don't even, on that debt clock, if you actually look at the full, if you Google debt clock, they got asset, the assets, assets per citizen, it's way higher. There, there is no debt. But anyway, I, that's a whole thing that I've been over a million times. I don't want to get into it again because it's ridiculous. Um, and so, yeah, that's it. I mean, they had their big moment today. The best thing to be in, I'll just throw out this one little tidbit, that if the, if the Fed is in a rate-cutting mode, which it is, and it has just begun, the best thing to be in is treasuries. Not gold, not silver. Gold was down, by the way, today. Now, and, and wait till you see what happens to gold. I've been talking about gold a lot. Uh, maybe some of you think, you know, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. I better go buy some gold right now at 2,600. Listen, uh, how many times have I said to you guys, you don't, you don't go against the producers, what they're doing. And gold producers have the biggest short position in gold futures in, in two and a half years. And the last time they had something like that, you had a 20% drop in the gold price and you're gonna get another 20% drop in the gold price right now. So what is that? Another five, 600 points down, we could dip below 2000 easily. And then nobody's gonna want it. But then I'll be on here again saying, that's when you gotta, that's when you gotta get back into it. Um, but there's people, most people are like that. They're just chasing out, they wait, they wait, then they see everybody piling in and then they pile in too and they hear it on CNBC and they hear it on Fox Business and they think, oh, it must be the right thing to do because everybody's saying that. You gotta look for things where there's not that concentration of a crowd. Nobody makes money when they're following the crowd. I have not heard of any fortune in, in any area of, of business or, or uh, innovation or anything. Maybe you can tell me, is there any area where fortunes have been made when everybody's doing the same thing? Ask yourself that. I mean, and if you behave in that fashion, some people might say, yeah, Mike, you're right. There hasn't been, but yet they'll go out and they'll do the exact thing when it comes to investing, the exact thing. I tell people to, you know, and I have people who say, maybe I should get into gold now. Gold's been going up since early 2022. Where were you? I've been pounding the table all that time up until recently, you know, in the last several months when I said, be careful on gold. You really don't want to be in it right now. It's going to have a pullback, or if you're in it, just expect that there's going to be a pullback. But now you, you first have people coming in saying, "Hey, I better buy gold at 2,600." You don't, you cannot invest like that and expect to have any kind of uh, superior returns. Really, any kind of returns at all, because what that speaks to is a highly emotional behavioral approach, and you're just going to shoot yourself in the foot. You're just going to sabotage yourself. Those things are not gonna work out. I mean, you're deluding yourself. I'm waiting until everybody is doing the same thing and then I'm gonna do that exact same thing. What is that? What is that? I'm asking. That's, that's just a recipe for nothing, nothing. And you're lucky if you even have barely mediocre results, which means like breaking even, because really you deserve to lose everything. That's all I can tell you. Anyway, please like and subscribe. I've noticed that uh, so not as many people are liking and subscribing recently, but okay, that's fine. If you want to like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. And don't forget, sign up for a 30-day free trial to MMT Trader. You get much more insight, recommendations, positioning, strategizing. You're going to have to understand a lot of stuff now. We've got the election new policies, a, a, a fundamental change in the monetary and, and fiscal condition with this beginning, with this rate cut that just happened today, That's and, and how that's going to play out. You need to know all this stuff. Anyway, that's it for today, folks. See you tomorrow. Bye.